All right. I'm here. Sorry, guys. I'm a minute or so late. Um, but we had a last minute potty run. Nature was calling and I had to take them. So, good Thursday evening. How is everybody today? Um, I'm much better today. Let's see. There's Don and Dawn. Say hi to Scotty. Um, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> she always gets an early mobile, mobile tech. Yes, we're here yet. <laughs> Just a little bit late. Oh, my gosh. My own box and frozen stuff. <laughs> but she's having rice, guys. How about that? <laughs> That's funny, Dawn. Just got back from pick. Oh, you're 48 camper. I saw the picture that you posted um, that the original owner sent you. That's so cool. 450 miles to LA and back. Wow. That's a long drive. I don't like LA. They can keep the traffic there. It was just in Texas for the big sun thing. It was pretty exciting, wasn't it, Don? There's Donna. Hi, Donna. How are you? How did the um, estate sale go? The sun disappearing act, for sure. It is a very long trek. I hope you stayed overnight and didn't drive it all in one day. Did it handle well? That's a good question. Pulled like a dream. I had to keep reminding myself that it was back there. Isn't that great? I love that. Um, that's That was my experience with my teardrop and um, my Airstream. And oddly enough, um, the fifth wheel pulls really good. So I'm grateful for that. The moon photo bomb. <laughs> Uh, hi, Henry and Leanne. Hey, guys. Thunderstorm watch tornado warning party. Yeah, you guys have got some bad weather coming your way. Um, I, I had it a few days ago, but thankfully, we didn't really get anything bad. I was um, at the Elm Creek Reservoir at the time, and it just kind of blew past. So I was grateful. We got some wind. And I don't really think we maybe got a sprinkler or two. Nothing that I remember being serious. I like those early 60s Alaskan camper. Yes, they're great, aren't they? I love vintage campers. Be on your website soon. I've already done one like it, and there are only six in the world, including that one. Well, you certainly have a gem there. Larry, that's pretty cool. It's a 1948. <clears throat> so, um, Henry and Leanne, do you have a basement or some kind of a storm shelter where you're at? Um, I know, you know, a lot of homes back in the Midwest have basements, and that's where we would always go if there was a tornado warning. It's very hot and humid here, and here it feels like something's brewing. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know this or do this, um, but my grandmother always did. Whenever we had warnings like that, she would go around and raise all of the windows about three or four inches uh, so that there wasn't any vacuum inside the house. And supposedly, that's supposed to help. Whether it really does or not, I don't know, but... Um, just something to think about. I don't know if y'all do it or not. Original family that bought it new. Oh, that's so cool. That's very cool. And they kept it all these years. Hi, Dawn. <laughs> Man, her mom's happy that toy in my new camper. Yeah. So was it all in one day, though? Chilly one coming. We, I've had it. Yesterday it was really windy and it got pretty cold last night and uh, very windy and chilly this morning. It got down to, I think, 49. But with the wind, you know, it 
felt more like 46, 47. Um, so it was pretty chilly and it's just now really starting to warm up as it's getting ready for the sun to go down. But the good thing is the sun did come out this afternoon around two o'clock. And so my batteries are full again. So that's really great. Um, my, my battery bank is doing great and my, I've got my one panel on the roof and my solar panel down on the ground and it seems to be working great for me. So I'm really happy about all that. Bowling and listening. All right. You go, William. Bowling is such a fun sport. It was really neat, wasn't it, Jennifer? No one likes LA, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I've driven through there a few times when um, right out of high school, I went and stayed with my aunt who lived in Pasadena. And, uh, and we would go and see my aunt who lived um, down in La Puente. And so we'd have to, you know, drive through there. And um, it's just a mess. And then trying to get to the airport when I flew home was horrendous. And that was back in 1972. I can't even imagine what it would be like now. <clears throat> Three day total. Good for you. That's good. That's good. Yeah have to take your time with that many miles. Hi, Renee. How are you? Where are you guys at now? Are you still in Texas or have you moved on? Your first and last sale never again. Yeah. I don't even like yard sales, Donna. I, I, I just refuse, you know, um, some stuff I'll take to the Goodwill store. Um, other stuff I'll try to give to people that I know that might want something. And then other than that, big pieces of furniture are all sell. Um, I've sold a couple of things on uh, Facebook Marketplace. But I, I just don't do yard sales. It, they're too much of a hassle. And people, um, there's thievery that goes on. And people will try to G you down and they get ugly towards you. And it's just not, it's not a good vibe earthquakes to the tornadoes and hurricanes. Thank you. I survived Hurricane Camille. Yeah. Yeah, that was a bad one. That was a really bad one. Um, I don't know. Hurricanes give you the opportunity to get out of the way before it gets there. That's the thing that I like about hurricanes. Tornadoes, you just don't. You don't have the time. You might get 15 seconds maybe 30 seconds, but not much more than that. And um, they're really devastating. So I'd rather deal with a hurricane where I've got time to board up my house and leave and head to um, better ground than to deal with tornadoes. Now in Oklahoma, heading north on the east side, I'm terrified being in tornado alley. Well, <laughs> You're not always going to run into a tornado. It doesn't, I'm sure that doesn't help relieve your anxiety, but um, you just have to be watchful of the weather and know when to go. That's it. You know, if you think there might be something brewing that you don't want to deal with, move on, move on. You have a lower level. That's good, Henry. Yeah, see, I'm not the only one. Um, it, I don't know. I think it really helps to relieve the pressure and the vacuum inside. And so it maybe doesn't destroy your house as badly. Sudden changes of pressure destroy all your windows. So keep them open. Yes. See? Yeah. So there we go. Yes. Did that in Illinois. Not four inches, maybe two. Yeah. Somewhere around there, you know, just to relieve that pressure. Can't even trailer right behind you or head short. Yes. Um, well, there it is. That is a gift from my sister. So j just a nice little decor. I thought it was very thoughtful of her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Be like those storm chasers. <laughs> Brave Henry's going to film a twister. If they're far enough away, there's no reason why you can't. <laughs> where I picked up a trailer. 
bought for 16,000 now worth 1.5 million. Oh my gosh. Wow. See, that's incredible, but who can afford to live there now? I mean, I lived out in California when my husband, my first husband was in the air force. He was stationed in San Bernardino at Norton. I loved it there, by the way, loved going to big bear Lake especially in the winter time i took my, sorry i gotta put my leg up um we took my little one um she was just about a year and a half two years old a, i guess a year and a half old um and we took her up to big bear when it was snowing and we had inner tubes and we uh tubed down the snow with her she absolutely loved it wow mississippi yeah, it's not just Trace's pretty cool. That's neat. I'm happy for you. Those that's a pretty area. Yeah. Once was enough. It's too much work for the little money. Yeah. I think the most that I've ever made other than selling furniture is about four hundred dollars. It just wasn't worth it to me. Hi Sue, how are you? Glad you're back home and your sister's doing good and life's better. That's great. Yeah, it's, I've never actually been through a tornado, um, but we've had some pretty scary close calls. Look at each other with their mouths open. Yeah, <laughs> as long as stuff isn't falling on your head. And come on saying hi to everyone hurricane sandy was terrible yes that was very devastating to your part of the country very bad tupelo mississippi stayed at jeff buzz i just saw a post about that campground not too long today i think i was looking at it um looks like a really nice place and it's free right it looks like a cool little place Everybody saying hi. Hello, hello, hello. I'm getting in the streets for small, so everyone parked in their driveways. But now everyone in the house has a car, so the streets are really tight and no parking anywhere. I'm sure that's true. I, I think that's true everywhere, though. I mean, I live in a cul-de-sac, and uh, my driveway will hold depending on how long the vehicles are like um, my son has my older truck and then I have my truck and then my daughter has um, a little Honda Civic um, and we can barely get the three of those in there. But if anybody else shows up at the house, they have to park in the street. You know, when you live on a cul-de-sac, it's, it's kind of tight, kind of tight. So it, it can be a real cluster. Yeah, there's no place like home for sure. That's absolutely true. I mean, like this winter, so our daughter and hubby are stationed there. Trying not to deal with California expenses. Yeah, it's pretty expensive anymore. There's Miss Summer. Hi, Summer. How are you? Summer was asking me the other day, um, and I don't know whether anybody else has ever thought about it. Ask me if I thought about um, what I might name my rig. And I honestly just kind of quit thinking about it. And um, so for now, it's just the fifth wheel. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've had too many things on my mind and it wasn't anything important to me. I don't know that I'll ever even name this trailer. So we'll see. We'll see if something strikes my fancy later on. Yep, free. Cool. Oh, that was your post. Okay. <laughs> oh. Hi, Summer. Hi to Peter, for sure. Four ninety a gallon and unleaded went up to five twenty a gallon. Part of the Gavin summer blend. <laughs> I hate those summer blends. That's just that's just ridiculous. <clears throat> I never heard of it until I don't know the last. 10, 15 years, summer blends, winter blends, it used to all be the same gas as far as I was concerned. Gas prices here, um, I saw 
yesterday I was in town and uh, they had regular gas for two ninety four a gallon and diesel was three thirty four. That's the cheapest I've seen it so far. So that was a pretty good deal. What base are they at? Hi, Melody. How are you? So, so, yeah. It's kind of been so, so here today, um, but I think it's more because of the wind. But the wind has calmed down quite a bit. Uh, last night, we had wind gusts of 37 miles an hour, and the trailer was just a rocking. Uh, I'm surprised the dogs weren't freaking out, but they did actually pretty good through it. And then it was like that this morning early, and then it's just progressively calmed down over the period of the day. So it's supposed to get down to like 10 or 12 miles an hour sustained wind, which is, I think, about where we're at now. Um, I just walked the dogs before I got online, uh, and it was much a much better walk than it was this morning. In fact, this morning, the wind was so bad, um, going out the door with the dogs for the first time during the day, um, the wind was just changing back direction, back and forth. The door would swing one way and then the other. And um, I was down on the, the last step of my steps um, and the door swung and hit me and knocked me off that step. Thankful, thankfully, I was only a one step fall, um, but it, it was pretty strong. And so <laughs> I had to pick myself up before I could even get the dogs out the door. It was crazy, um, but much, much calmer this afternoon. <sighs> California was only 529 for regular. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, actually, that's not too bad for California, that is. <sighs> Goodwill, yeah. Doing well, working too much for mom. Oh, well, I'm sure you don't mind doing it, though. I have one right now. You have one right now? Cool. Um, at least you have one bar. That's the thing of it. I mean, right now I've got two. Um, yesterday I had, when I first got here, it was like three to four bars. And then... We were expecting bad storms tonight. Yeah. Don't forget the thumbs up. Thank you, William. He's a Marine jarhead. <laughs> hey, Kim, how are you? Yeah, one hurt. Just, just to tumble that one last step. <clears throat> so, um, I don't know how many of you saw my post on Facebook. But it was quite an experience getting in here yesterday. It wasn't. There's Ken and Carla. Hi, guys. And Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Um, wasn't quite the same experience as when I arrived the first time that I was here. Um, so driving back towards this way, I was, I don't know, maybe eight or ten miles away. And I could see smoke billowing up um, and I thought, oh, Lord, I don't know where that fire is, but I hope it's not near the campground. And I kept driving. And for a while, it kind of disappeared. And then I made another term. And there it was again. And it just was there and kept getting closer. And sure enough, it was here. Let me show. So I don't know how many of you have seen um, my post on Facebook. But this is what it looked like as I got close to the campground. They were doing a prescribed burn. And the one of the rangers met as you were nearing the entrance to the park. And uh, you know, he said, you know, the campground is still open, you can still go in, but just watch for uh, fire trucks and rangers and workers and try to stay out of their way and stay to the left of the road. So that's what I did. And I stopped to um, get water and fill up my tank. Um, and that was an experience because they, they have one of those 
hoses that's on those poles that bend down that has a, a hose already attached to it. But of course, there was no male end on the end of the hose. It was just cut off. Um, and I, I have to have a connection to put it into my rig. So I thought, well, crap. So I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll find a water spigot on in the park. And I just pulled into one of the paid campsites um, and used their water connection where no one was parked there yet and filled up my tank and then I parked. Um, and then uh, one of the rangers came by and said they decided that they was going to burn this section of the campground uh, that day as well. And so I thought, well, okay, it's going to be smoky. I'll leave for a couple of hours. So I took the, um, and I'll show you. Okay. So this is, this is my view from um, the edge of the lake there from my site. It's so pretty here. I love the water. Um, and this is the vegetation around the edge of the camp. That lady is uh, up in the next site. Here's the shelter uh, for my site. And you see all that dry, br grassy brush there. So that's what they were getting rid of. And so we went in town, stayed for a couple of hours and came back. And this is what um, it looked like around the edge of the camp. Just, you know, they just were burning enough just to get rid of all that uh, dry grass, just to try to prevent any fires. Um, and then I thought they were done for a while. Everything seemed to kind of clear up and uh, the smoke was going away. Uh, the wind was in a good direction for where they had burnt. Uh, so we weren't getting smoke. Um, and then they decided to burn back up uh, behind me. Uh, and then it got really smoky. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And um, that that went on for about two and a half hours, I guess. This, I took this picture last night at 8.30. So, and they finally quit burning after that little section. Once it died down, they, they stopped for the night. You can see the fire truck there um, at the end of my rig up there. But uh, yeah, quite an experience, quite a day. Um, and so there it was smoke filled air and finally the wind drifted a little bit and started blowing the smoke across the lake uh, instead of towards me. So at least I could sleep last night without smoke billowing in the trailer um, and I could open my windows. So quite a different story. Today it's been really nice. It's nice and clear. No, they're not burning anymore in the campground. Uh, so hopefully the rest of my stay here will be nice. And then we had this beautiful sunset. Um, it's just a beautiful view across the lake at night. And then do you guys see over on the right hand side of that picture, there's, there's another white spot and I, I can't for the life of me figure out, is that Venus or is that the moon rising? right there by the sun. I don't get it. What do you think? Tell me what you think. And um, on our way back to the campground yesterday, after we'd been in town, I drove down this one road that I thought, I thought there was another campground up here and it's called Cedar Canyon. And so I just thought I was going to go look at a campground, but it's actually just a recreation area. And as I drive down, you see this view of this lake and you can actually drive all the way down to the lake. You can park like right there by the water um, and get out and put your feet in there or go swimming or do whatever you want to. It's really a cool little recreation site. So that's something I hadn't seen the last time I was here. So I was grateful for that. So maybe on a nicer day. Um, might go over there and take the dogs and see if they'll put their feet in the water. I've never, never had them do that before. They always shy away from the water. So we shall see. Rising or no, it's not a lens refraction. Um, those, I usually get little green spots, but it's not the lens. Thanks.
Okay, let me go back up here. Fish in there. There's lots of fishing in this. Like, there's a lot of people who come out here in their boats. There's a big boat ramp and a big parking lot at the boat ramp. Um, so people use this lake very heavily. But I'm not biased about the house fry. Yeah. But yeah, it, you know, they had so many fire trucks and so many firemen and rangers out here yesterday. It was very well orchestrated. Um, and they, as they were burning, the fire trucks and the hoses were following along and they just, they got it done. They put it out and they moved on. <laughs> it was really cool to watch them. Yeah. Wow. Lots of fishing. Your yeah, allergies would have killed you. Yeah. It's it. The dogs even didn't like being outside for very long. I just took them out long enough to be and that was it. They have had a lot of control burning before we got here to rise. Cool. Very, you know, I am so grateful that they do things like that. I would much rather see a control burn than to see all of these unsettling wildfires that you, that, you know, hit us every single year. I'd much, much rather see a control burn. <clears throat> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, allergies for sure. Yeah. You have to be careful breathing that if you have issues. Thankfully, I don't. Um, it, it didn't bother me. It was just annoying. Um, and I think I need, before I um, go anywhere, I want to get some 409 and wipe down the walls just to make sure I don't have any lasting effects. Yeah, I, I kind of think it is too, but I was reading online and it said that um, right now at this time of year that Venus is below the horizon. Um, but I think they're talking about in the nighttime sky and it wasn't really dark yet. The sun hadn't actually really very set. So second Venus, <laughs> we love that place. Very nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Dawn, that's not Venus. What do you think it is? There were three planets seen during the eclipse. Well, it's not the eclipse. If that's Venus, we're in big trouble. <clears throat> what do you think? Green time, if so. <laughs> moon rising. I, and I've, you know, I've seen that happen before where the moon and the sun are kind of like in the same plane. They're not across from each other. Um, it does happen on occasion. It's just kind of rare when it does, I think. It's really not a lens refraction. Um, totally not. It would look totally different on my camera. You thought that at first. Uncontrolled too often, exactly. Prescribed burns, yes. Miss seeing your rig and you up here with us. Oh, thank you. I miss seeing you too. <clears throat> it's California's middle name. Yeah, for sure. Me too. Me too. Um, you know, had I known you were gonna you know, go to Bryce, I may have gone on and gone that way, but um Things happen for a reason, I guess. And uh, I, I'm not sure what my direction is going to take me in this year. I'm I'm having some trouble routing. I know what I'd like to do, um, but I'm having trouble finding spots to stop and camp in along the way. Um, and that's kind of disheartening to me. I'm, I'm really not driving over 300 miles a day anymore. Um, you know, in the past, as Don and Kevin will attest to, I've driven 450, 500 miles a day without thinking about it. But um, I just, I'm not going to push myself like that anymore. And, you know, with a bigger rig, I, I like, I like to have planned fuel stops and planned rest stops and um, just be a little bit more careful. Don, no doubt. You can see Venus at sunset or sunrise. 
Well, so that's when, you know, it's a possibility. I just, I don't know if it's Venus or the moon. Yeah. I sure wish you would have too. Tennessee Prison. I'm ready. I bet you are. Bet you're ready to skedaddle. Where do you think you might head, Donna? Try not, not to drive more than three hours. Well, a three-hour drive takes me longer than three hours <laughs> um, because I have to stop for bathroom breaks. But that's just the nature of me, and that's not going to change. So I just make adjustments. Oh, that's so cool. 65 during the day, 35 to 48 at night. Just beautiful so far. That's so cool. I love that place. I absolutely love it. <sighs> Missing the West. Yep. Oh, no. And I've had to. Wow, wow, wow. <clears throat> Do you know what kind of ticks they were? Is there a... a I know a lot of deer ticks carry Lyme disease, and you may be in that qualifying realm. Um, it's just hard to say what kind of ticket, if you know what kind of ticket it is, if you're more at risk for Lyme disease. Not all of them will give you Lyme disease, but a lot of them will. So I hope that that comes out negative. But anyway, so... Um, so I'll be here for two weeks. So I'll be here next Thursday as well. And if it's nice enough and the wind calms down, I'll go outside and you can see outside. I'll, um, let me turn, let me do my back camera with the window. You can maybe see a little bit of, no, I think it's going to just be, oh, maybe that's the, Let's do the back camera. You can't really see. I thought maybe you could see it. Um, through the window, but because it looks really good from here. But anyway, sorry, guys. I was trying to show you part of the campground. So um, just right across the road from me are the paid campsites. And then it just kind of makes a loop. So the paid campsites are all in the um, inner circle and the dispersed sites are in the outer circle. Uh, and I drove all the way around when I came in here. But the I don't know, for me, the roads were kind of bad and the turns were very tight up in the upper part where the dispersed sites were so I just came back down here to where I was parked the last time I was through here um I I think I'm one campsite up from where I was the last time um but it's just such a great view of the lake and I like it where I'm at going to Bryce Monday it never gets old <laughs> Bryce Canyon's a beautiful place to visit that's for sure Perfect game. Wow. Five frames left. Good for you. Halfway through. I miss bowling. It's such, such fun. But I can't even hold them all in my hands anymore because of my carpal tunnel. I just don't have a strong enough grip. I'm going to go into hate 6 p.m. Yes. I know. It's... It's really crappy when you have a 6 p.m. check-in. That's It's like, what are they thinking? That's dinner time, you know? So you can't even check in until 6 p.m. And then you have to drive in, find your site, and set up. And by the end of the day, you don't feel like cooking or having a meal. or It's just crappy. So plan your meal time ahead and have like tuna salad or something where you can just throw a sandwich together because that's I hate six o'clock check-ins I agree Don we stayed in Shirley just open this week that's so cool very cool yes I do love that spot yeah yeah it's lovely Small, the doctor said, accounts for 80% of people that they see from early spring to midsummer. Wow. 
<clears throat> but are they positive for, for limes? That's the whole thing. Uh, I'm sure they see a lot of people with tick bites, but how many of them really truly have Lyme disease from them? Still snow, it's very pretty. Wow. You can keep the snow, Kim. I'm, I'm not fond of that part. I can't do snow. <laughs> Congrats, William. Sue, how are you and Bob and the puppies? Those puppies are so cute. They're very sweet dogs. Mid 80s here, nice weather. Everything is green. Very nice. Very lovely. Love mid 80s. Well, lower 80s. Once it starts getting over 84, then I start getting uncomfortable. I'm exposed much to the homeless situation because we don't have that problem here. That's good. But what I saw, gas stops in California just blew me completely away, walking dead for, oh my gosh. That's just so sad. It really is. You know, it, I think of how many homeless people that we have who are Americans. I'm not going to go there. That's all I'm saying. But you know what I'm thinking. Snowed there last weekend. No, 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 Larry. Snows in Texas and Oklahoma so far. <clears throat> So red rocks and green trees, it's beautiful contrast. I'm sure that's true. I just don't like snow anymore. Oh. It's bad here in Jersey too. I'm, I'm just, it's a horrible thing to say, but I think it's a little bit funny uh, that New York is getting fed up. That's all I'm going to say. <sighs> yes, there are a lot of Corps of Engineer parks in Texas and Oklahoma. <sighs> 154 over 91, doing better. <clears throat> it, yes, getting much better, much better. Into the 80s inside our rig, yeah. That's very true. Comes with it. Glad we don't have that problem in my small town for sure. Don't allow it here. <laughs> it was cold, but the temps are great here. <clears throat> well, it's like April, so yeah, they should be pretty good there now. Um, let's see. We were there the first day the park reopened. It was on a May 6th, as I remember. That was that was a cool visit because there weren't that many people there. I enjoyed that visit to Bryce. Guns and backhoes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So anyway. Yeah, I've um uh, I've got one reservation. Um in Oklahoma, uh, I wanted to try to do Eastern Colorado, but I haven't been able to find campgrounds that there's some dispersed sites um, that I could have chosen, but um, they look The roads were a little were buffering, buffering. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> That's how it kind of gets in the evenings around here. But uh, so I'm being really cautious about where I'm going. Number one, I'm alone this year. Um, number two, I'm driving a rig that's got low clearance with my back jacks. I hate that fact. Um, I'd love to be able to take those damn back jacks off and replace them with something else. Uh, I don't know how that would go, but maybe something to investigate later on. 
but I'd really like to get rid of them. Yes, it is. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going there. I don't watch it anymore, Donna. It's bad. Yeah, it's very bad. Yeah. <laughs> and Don asked me a question the other day about something, if I'd heard this or that. And I'm like, have no idea. I just, I don't watch the news. Um, I stream programs on um, Paramount and Netflix. And I don't deal with commercials. <laughs> and I don't deal with news. Looking for a land to put a tiny home on so we can have as Oh, that's nice. Thinking about Pennsylvania or Delaware. Pennsylvania is a nice state. I, I like Pennsylvania. Pretty, pretty country. Um, I haven't really seen a whole lot of Delaware, but I'm sure it's beautiful as well. So anyway. Um, so what's everybody else's travel plans for spring? Tell me what you're thinking. Where are you going? Rawhide, Perry Mason, and Gunsmoke. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Don't watch the news either. Yeah, it's too depressing. You know, and I'm eventually going to find out if it's something that's really, really important. That's my philosophy. I have people that keep track of stuff like that, that, you know, can buffer through it for me and just give me the details that I need. <laughs> I, I don't need to burden my mind with it. It's, uh, you know, at 70, almost 70 years of age, it's not anything I need to know. So I don't. For a month or more. That's good. You'll have plenty of time with your family, huh? Yeah, doing a trip at the end of the month. Oh, down near the Mexican border in California. So down near Baja. <clears throat> yes, I, I would love to go to Colorado, but maybe approach it from the West. Um, and I don't think I'd want to do that alone. I think if, you know, if I'm going to climb in mountainous territory, I don't want to be by myself. that is good fishing yeah good fishing is always a good thing huh you guys everything is rv related <laughs> that's true that's true yeah i just don't think it's a good idea to um go into mountains if i was younger okay but i'm not i'm not and um uh, you know, there's only so much knowledge that I have and so much that I can do. Um, I just don't have the strength in my hands like I used to anymore. So just trying to be a little bit more cautious, that's all. Yes, that's that's very true, Don. That That's where you need to establish your base. Boating too. Gosh, <clears throat> you know, other than little tour boats, I haven't been on a, uh, out on a boat since I was a kid. You know, my aunt and uncle used to have a little um, boat and they'd take my dad and my brother and I out and we'd ride up and down the river, or do some fishing every now and then, take a, you know, take a picnic lunch and eat out there on the water. It was very cool. Haven't, but like I said, I haven't done that since I was a kid, really. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Three odd fish is pretty tasty at the Salton Sea. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, pontoon boats are the way to go. I've never mm, haven't been out on a catamaran in Aruba. Um, but I don't think I've really been on a pontoon. So, yeah, I guess I have been on a boat. I have been on that catamaran, but um, not just, a, you know, a little personal pleasure boat. Oh, cool. Cool. 
Yeah, I think a lot of people use them for like a little party boat. Don, call me no way. Have you seen the prices in South Dakota? We are considering changing our domicile. Really? <clears throat> um, I didn't realize that they'd had so much price fluctuation, but there again, I don't listen to the news. So I have to concentrate now. Two frames left. All right. Go for it, William. Talk to you later. Have a good game. Central Pennsylvania for truck and camper inspection and to see our five kids. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Good family time. Get all your uh, stuff taken care of. I've got to get uh, new plates on my truck and my trailer this September. Thank you, Florida, for that nice birthday present. <clears throat> we'll look into it. That's That's good information, Kim. Thanks for sharing that with her. It's incredibly important to know what you're walking into before you, you do it, actually. But, um, she needs to establish a doctor someplace. So, I don't know. Because we have family there. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing to do. So anyway, all right, well, I guess that's all the adventures that I have to talk about. Does anybody else want to say anything? The insurance guy could not believe the prices in South Dakota. What, what have you experienced recently in South Dakota as far as prices? Or is it something that you just heard on the news? Or uh, what's the deal? Food. Oh, food prices are up. Is that a lot of it? Or is that your plan? You want to talk about food, mobile tech? I had a hamburger today. How's that? Yes, you have something to say? Okay, we'll say it. Truth was that I got to eat a lot of really good restaurant food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, guess what? Did you have rice? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I'll tell you, after driving up here yesterday and running into this fire situation and then having to, you know, after just getting set up, uh, having to drive into town, couldn't even, you know, and I hadn't eaten. I don't eat all day when I, when I travel like this. Um, so, you know, by three o'clock I'm hungry. And so we, when we went in town, I stopped at Wendy's and got a burger there. And it was one of the best burgers I've had in a long time. You all are awesome. Inquiring for insurance. Oh, okay. So I'll walk in without a cell phone and the kiosk. Yeah, that's, I, I hate that. No humans. I couldn't use drive through because the trailers. So you left. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like doing that kiosk thing either. I'm like, I want to either pull up to the window and order or come inside and up to the counter and place an order. But I, I think that, you know, because of the minimum wage thing, they're doing away with more people. And that's why those kiosks are in place uh, because of that minimum wage law. So <clears throat> thank you, people of California, for wanting a higher minimum wage. Take us a while. A lot of sightseeing to do. Yeah. Sightseeing is lots of fun. Yeah, so state doesn't matter. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <clears throat> what what was it I saw just recently a thumbnail about some of something closing because of the minimum wage? I don't remember what it was now. The highest state in the US. Wow. That's not good. Well, 
will sure be a minimum wage now. Like really minimum. Like zero. Because no humans. Yeah. 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 And then you can't even go flip a burger. We'll have more people out on the street. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm antisocial. I'd rather have a kiosk. <laughs> okay, Donna. Well, everyone has to uh, be to their own drum, right? That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that stuff. I mean, it's not that I can't. It, it's like going to Panera's and you have to order off of the little... It's like a little kiosk and pay. And there's not a person there to take your order anymore. It's like, really, it's ridiculous. Panera. It's not McDonald's. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I just think that there's a whole lot wrong with us anymore. Has more social skills. <laughs> That's... Sad, but probably very true. <laughs> or the kind of social skills that, that I would accept. Hmm. Okay, not going there either. And that's another political topic. <clears throat> I don't know. The world has gone crazy. And my foot's falling asleep. I'm sorry. I have to rub my foot. So anyway, I've been sitting here on this stool for nearly an hour now. And these aren't the most comfortable to sit on for long periods of time. It's okay to sit down and eat a snack or a meal, but that's about all I like them for. I think I'll eventually get different um, stools or chairs to put here. Deal with the machine. I can't yell at a machine. Yeah. Quit watching the news. Yeah. Well, she doesn't really watch this. She scrolls all morning long while um, she's waiting for Kevin to get up. Vote with your wallets for sure. Look, just looking out for our future. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's going to happen, especially if you're not voting. It's going to happen whether you want it to or not. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. <clears throat> it's important if you want to have a voice, you need to vote. And on that note, I'm going to say y'all have a great Thursday evening. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, enjoy wherever you're at. And I will talk to you guys next Thursday. Good night.